casual meeting. I have a couple people who I've not met, John or Jessica, so hi. Hello. Um, hi. You're more than welcome to introduce yourselves. Go, go ahead, Jessica. Okay, sure. Um, so I am the new director of cybersecurity research at the Linux Foundation, and I've been working with Kate Stewart uh, quite a bit over the last couple of weeks trying to align uh, the core infrastructure initiative and talking about the best practices badge with some of the things that you guys are working on. So okay. I will be joining the calls um, just to make sure that we all stay on the same page. Super. That sounds great. Nice to meet you, Jessica. Nice to meet you. And uh, my name is John Murtick. Um, I'm not new to the Linux Foundation. I've been around um, for a while. I lead a few projects um, here, um, ODTI, Open Mainframe, for a little while longer, our consortium um, and Academy Software Foundation. Um, and I spend a lot of time, um, at least with Academy ODPI and Open Mainframe on helping sort of establish some of the best practices um, within the communities. Um, and it's actually one of my goals this year is to help refine um, some of the practices even we're using as we're helping some of our um, umbrella projects get up and going. So, um, and talking with Kate, which I've known Kate for a while, she said you should really get involved here. Okay. Um, so I really probably going to sit a little bit as a lurker and just really try to learn a lot. Um, and so don't uh, feel offended or hopefully I, I don't offend by uh, not contributing a lot at the get go. I'm just really looking to learn from you. I mean, I've been around open source my entire career, but um, oftentimes at the same time, I'm, I'm just as much as the pupil as the, the teacher. So um, I'm eager to learn, I'm eager to see sort of the practices here um, and maybe hopefully share some of the experiences that I've had. Um, so um, thanks, thanks for being inclusive to me. Yeah, right on. And if you have anything, do you have anything like links to post to some of your project stuff? That would be helpful for us as well. You can put them in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some of my projects have built out some more of like governance process um, things, which may or not be, it might be interesting to some of you, might be able to add at the same time. Um, but what I'm really kind of hoping to garner is ways that I can help guide them on, are they being successful? Or are they not? Like, what are some of the metrics and things like that? So I think that's where a lot of my main interest is. But yeah, I'll drop some links in the chat of some of the projects and where they're at. Cool. That'd be really great. And I do have to comment on your old school Cavaliers hat. So thank wow. you for the notice there. Yeah. Oh, I got another NBA guy here. So well, three. I lived in Cleveland for three years. So oh, okay. Um, I grew up in Ohio. You did? I oh. lived in Cleveland Heights. So oh, I, I used to work um, before my first career at my first job out of college. I worked in uh, Highland Heights, um, but I lived down closer to Akron here. So sure. um, yeah, cool. it's Where were you down? Right now. I, hopefully you're somewhere warmer. Uh, no, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, that's not warmer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, uh, Mike Dolan and I are well, actually, and Brian Warner were like the three LFers that surround. I had me. I had Mike and Brian in class. Oh, okay. <laughs> my big joke, my big thing with of Mike is to get him out to lunch every so often. Um, yeah, they're both good. Yeah. I used to be faculty at Case Western. So oh, cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, a Kent State grad, so. Okay. I am too. That's where I got my CS degree. No kidding, what year? <laughs> it's all uh, yeah, it's like <laughs> I graduated. I was, I was there from 89 to 95. Okay, I was a few years after that. I was there from 90. Well, I started at the Stark campus, but 99 to 01. Yeah. So right Ken Batcher was my uh, advisor. Well, we all better get along now because... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, now we have all of our roots established. Yeah, the pressure's on. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so I'll if for anybody that's kind of joining joining new. If, if you have questions, obviously, just interject at any time. The way that we run this is that on the first the first of the first Tuesday of the month is a more formal meeting, and these are just a little bit more casual. Sometimes they run shorter. Sometimes they run a little longer, I guess. But um, they're just really meant to kind of get um, ideas out and kind of updates on where things are at. So I'll, I'll start. Um, I've been, so we've been doing some repository changes and I'm just going to put a link into the chat. Um, so there's a, a link to the metrics page that I've been working on. So basically the way this is going is there's two working groups. One is, uh, well, there's three. 
uh, diversity and inclusion and um, growth, maturity, and decline. And those working groups are really kind of developing focus areas, um, addressing problems and answering questions within those focus areas, and then trying to determine which are the best metrics to address those problems, right? So it's kind of this top down, what are the problems first? And then what are the metrics that we can use to basically address those problems? Um, the, the metrics repository is, is a long list of, of metrics that we've just really kind of been capturing over time that we've just heard at meetings, that we've heard at focus groups, that we've, however we have come across, as people have contributed, uh, and we've been adding them here. And so there was a request for this to do a couple things. One is to kind of go through the list itself um, and just kind of take a look at the list, take a look at, at the type, the names of the things, take a look at, um, at this question description, but then also uh, associate the metric with where the work is being done on it. So for example, right now, a list of licenses, the third metric on that list is not being addressed by any of the working groups. Although as the risk working group moves forward, it's quite likely that that would live in the risk space. Mm -hmm. Right, so, um, so what this has done, you can see I've tried to connect all of the DNI stuff. So if there wasn't anything in a, in a row in this list that DNI was working on, I added it here. And I also tried to kind of align the questions that you had, say in DNI, as they're represented here. So this is kind of my first pass at it. It's not perfect by any means, but it, it, should, it should be getting there. Um, right now, the link, if you click on the link, say on, I don't know, code review efficiency on GMD, it actually takes you to the work that's being done within the GMD work group. Well, actually, that one does not. That takes you to the work that's being done in the activity metrics. Let me pick a different one. Uh, say collaboration style for, for diversity and inclusion. So if you click on collaboration style, it takes you to the work that's being done on collaboration style. Right. So what um, questions or thoughts right now? So again, this is just a long laundry list of all the metrics. And then there's work that's potentially being done in the working groups. Thoughts? This is Comment. super helpful. I mean, for the, especially for the common metrics working group, because then this gives us a better understanding of where the where the gaps are. So I think that's probably gonna be the focus of the next meeting is looking down through the ones that aren't being addressed by either GMD or DNI and trying to pull out some of the ones that maybe, maybe are more important and that we should have somebody take a look at starting to define those. So okay. this is, um, yeah, this is incredibly helpful. Thank you, Matt. You bet. And I'll, um, I'll do my, my best to, because I attend both the GMD and the DNI meetings. As there's changes, I'll, I'll make sure to keep those, because it's just kind of a manual process here at the moment to keep these things aligned. Um, one of the things that it did as well is both working groups should notice that I issued a, I added a few issues or some pull requests just based on some inconsistency that I was seeing. You can you can just toss those out if I, you don't think I know what I'm talking about. But sometimes little things like um, there was one in, I don't remember what the issue was, but in the DNI group, you had the same metric twice, but it was two different metrics in two different spots. Mm -hmm. So maybe just renaming it somewhere. <laughs> so it was really, it was pretty eye opening from my perspective just to kind of get down into the into the details of, of how the work groups are, are working on the metrics and what the names are and all that kind of stuff. Um, other comments on this? I'll just, I'll, conti I'll continue to clean it up, but that's where it's at right now. In the case of TMD, do you have some comments from the full reports that are doing it? Yeah, sometimes they were just things like, um, I, I don't know, I forget what they were. Maybe, uh, definition name. I don't know. So, sometimes they were just, they were almost just typos and I didn't feel like going straight into the work groups and fixing the typo or fixing the, I know what it was. Sometimes you're, sometimes in, you would have the, the high level page uh, that has a list of all of the metrics that are associated with a focus group. You know what I mean? Each of the work groups does this. So you'd have a, you'd have a focus area that is a communication, right? In DNI. 
And then within communication, you have, a, say, five metrics that are in communication. Sometimes the name you would have in that table is different than the name that you would have on the detail page. Does that make sense? So you'd have, if I was to pull one up here, I can show you what I'm talking about. So let's see. I mean, I probably won't find one right off the bat. But um, if I go to work group diversity and inclusion and I go into their focus areas and I click on here, I'll, I'll post this. So basically the way that this is structured with, within each working group, there are focus areas anywhere right. between say two to three in the GMD area right now and then maybe five in DNI, five or six in DNI. Mm -hmm. um, so each one of the, the focus areas has this table. So, and in the, the, the link that I just sent, they have collaboration style, contribution type. That's one of the ones that is a repeater. Uh, perceived value and contribution uh, sentiment. And sometimes, I'm not saying any of these, if you click on contribution style, it takes you to the detail page regarding contribution style. Sometimes the name that's in this list is different than the name that's the title of the detail page. Sometimes those are different. So Seems like in the, in the list, it'll be called open issues. And on the detail page, it'll be called issues that are open. <laughs> and that's just little things. Yeah, we'll take a look. I mean, some of those might be typos. Some of them might be, we decided to rename it and just forgot to rename it in one place and renamed it in another. So yeah, well, th thank you for doing that. I mean, it's always, yeah. it's always interesting. Every time I'm digging through the repository for something specific, I always notice, I always notice other things because. Exactly. You, you make a change one place and, and then you forget to, to change it elsewhere. I just went through and fixed a bunch of broken links that we had broken at some point when we reorganized the repository and just not. Just not fixed. Not them. noticed. Yeah. Yep. And so until you click them, you won't know. And the same would hold true sometimes on the questions. Sometimes in those tables, you would have the question. So like, again, I'll just stick with that same contribution page that I sent out. So the question here is sometimes different than the question that's on the detail page. You know what I mean? So the name is a little bit different sometimes and the question's a little bit different sometimes. That's all. So, um, so that some of those issues and pull requests that I submitted, we're just trying to fix those things when I saw them <laughs> really obviously. So, all right, uh, that's my big thing. That's what I did last week and on Monday. Cool. Um, all right, doesn't seem like there's any other questions on that. Um, Gary, do you wanna, do you wanna, can, do you think we can share the outreachy thing we wanna send out? Yeah. We can document. certainly share that. So Georg, thanks to Georg, he put together a, a brief proposal to try to find support for Outreachy. So again, the way that Outreachy works is the community brings dollars forward to fund the student for the summer. And there has been, at least in some past talks, I think recently, uh, some potential interest in supporting an outreachy student for the DNI group. So again, thanks to Georg for putting this together. Okay, I fixed the access issue. Okay. Okay, so the idea that I had is like we have for Google Summer of Code, different project ideas. And so I came up with three project ideas of where the DNI work group could use help. One of them is implementing metrics. So the intern would learn the metrics and then partner with projects they know or other projects to drive adoption of our metrics and then bring back the feedback and lessons learned. The second idea is to 
implement metrics and make the data collection and analysis easier. So it's really a software development project. And the third idea is to work on the documentation and ways we visualize metrics and help us have better metric definitions. So those are the three project ideas. Any thoughts? Quick read. Again, who had who had asked for this, Georg? I forget it. So I will have to go back to the DNI meeting minutes. Okay. We had um, it was like a week and a half ago. Or and ago. someone from the Linux Foundation both saying that there might be ways to even if outreach doesn't work. If he had a description that would be helpful to maybe find money or find someone to do it. Okay. I thought it was somebody from Red Hat that had mentioned that Red Hat might have dollars, if I recall. Sorry. Yeah, it was. It was somebody from Red Hat. His name okay. starts with an L, and I'm drawing a complete blank, and I've known him for years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you're, you're forgiven. No, Brian, Brian, you would know. It's a like Lang something. Langdon. Langdon. Yes. yes, that was who it was. You owe me Thank five dollars for not telling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll buy you a beer next summer in Brussels. <laughs> so, um, Georg, do you know how to reach out? Do you know how to get in touch with Langdon? I do not. Brian, do you know how to get in touch with Langdon? Um, five dollars? No. Yes, I will happily give you five dollars. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. What do you? What do we need? I'm sorry, I was a little distracted. What are we asking you? What so do we just connect you on an email? Uh, well, basically, it's potential support from Red Hat for an outreachy student. Right. Right. Because they're actually working on a diversity and inclusion thing within the. Um, with Boston University yep. and some of their AI work. Cause I just talked to um, Langdon and his new intern, Manny. And okay. I don't remember the kid's last name anyway. Yeah. So I will, who do you want me to connect you or Georg? Uh, how about me and Georg? Both of you to Langdon. Got okay. it. Thank you. No money needed. <laughs> I'll still buy it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you, Georg, for putting that together. Um, and I guess while we're on the topic, I, Google Summer of Code should be announced relatively shortly. Is I think it's like in a week or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so no word on that yet. Um, I guess while I still am chatting and then I'll turn it over, um, I'm putting together, for those of you that are on the board, I'm putting together the agenda uh, like just a slide deck on things to talk about. So I, I'll make a call here. If there are people, uh, if there are topics that whether on the board or not on the board that you would like the board to address when we meet at the Open Source Leadership Summit, you can just email me directly. And my email address is here. Uh, so if there's topics that you'd like to bring up right now, the well, like I said, I'll share it with the board. So I'm just slowly putting together a slide deck that we can talk around. Okay. Uh, and the meeting is still nine o'clock on Friday morning. So, all right. Um, I think that's it for me, kind of in terms of updates from last week. Uh, either of the working groups or I, I, all three, I should, it's not either anymore. So I'm going to just stop that. Uh, any three of the working groups? I can give a super quick update that, uh, so the common metrics working group meets every other week. So we did not meet last week, but we do have a meeting at, let's see, 8 a.m. Pacific. So I guess that's 10 a.m. Central, 4 p.m. for me in London. Um, so I would encourage people to attend. I will send a reminder to the, the list with all of the details tomorrow. Thank you. That's good. Um, are you going to, are you leading all those meetings? 
Um, I have so far, just until we get sort of kicked off and have a cadence. And then okay. what I'll probably do is like the DNI does where we rotate rotate leaders and note takers. Okay. I thought, I, I thought I'd lead the first first couple just for, for consistency until we get started. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, DNI, anything on the DNI side? Um, we are ramping up to go to the Open Source Leadership Summit, um, where we are having a few meetings and want to just sit together and work together on some issues. Um, so it looks like uh, from the Linux Foundation, there's a good interest in piloting the DNI metrics. So that'll be one of the topics at the Leadership Summit. Okay. And then we had a conversation on the mailing list, and I thought this was interesting for the project as a whole, about how we can be more inclusive to people who cannot make our weekly calls. So things like having discussions on the mailing list about topics, we can prime them here on the call and then post a short primer to the mailing list to continue the conversation there and include more people. Okay. So that was something that I thought is interesting because I sometimes feel like we have a lot of really good conversations here and then they don't continue or spread beyond the group that's on the call. So was it for the DNI working group or was it for in general? The email chain was specific to the DNI working group, but I think it applies to all of the chaos group work. Okay. Um, actually, so I've, I've noticed that in the DNI group that even just posting the minutes, which is probably something I should do better here in the general, generates a lot of discussion, which is great. I don't know if that's what you're kind of getting at or just even more specific than that. Uh, in addition to the minutes, the minutes is a good starting place, but then to have actual conversations on the mailing list where we have engagement from people who would prefer to work asynchronously. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Maybe, do we have a, okay, maybe GMD can do the same. Um, so in the case of GMD, we decided some months ago to more, do most of the work using issues and good requests. And uh, meetings are basically uh, going through issues and good requests so that people are willing to work as soon as they, they can. And then the meetings, what we are trying to do is to get consensus on the things that maybe we don't agree or it's not clear that we are agreeing on the issue itself. So I think it's basically the same conclusion that the DNI uh, reached. That instead of focusing on mailing list, we are focusing on issues and the uh, So maybe it's just as simple as sending a note out every now and then saying, hey, don't forget if you want to participate yeah. in the conversation. Exactly. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, cool. Um, great. Uh, by the, so I did think too, um, by the way, Zoom does provide audio transcripts really? for all of our meetings. Oh. So, and believe it, or, and, and as I was going through that metrics list, one of the, one of the metrics is providing an audio or a, a transcribed um, output from the meeting. So I, I, I'm happy to do that. I'm not quite sure. Do you think I should post it perhaps with the video? I just post the videos right every week. So as they're recorded, as they are now, they just show up in my email. I just download them and I just toss them up on the chaos site. I could, I, I think, attach the audio transcript to that video. Would you think that's a good idea? I, I would, so. I think that's a good idea. Okay, it's really, it's, I mean, it's no, no extra work really for me, so. Yeah, personally, I mean, I would, I would rather read an audio transcript because I read a lot faster than watching okay. video. No, I'll take the I don't, I don't know how good it is, but nonetheless, I can still provide it. Okay. It'll be an improvement over the current state, by the way. What do you mean? So even if the transcript is not good, I know that 
that Zoom does not differentiate between speakers and it looks really choppy because the format it comes in is supposed to be consumed by software that creates subtitles or the closed captioning within the video. So it doesn't look super user friendly from what I've seen. Okay. Um, but it'll be better than not having it. Can you provide closed captioning post hoc? YouTube has a feature. But can Zoom do it? I don't know. I mean, if you I'm convert it to sure. a YouTube video, I'm sure you can. Okay. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you can create a private channel on on YouTube. You upload the video there. Yep. Yeah. Then it will have that closed captioning option that you you will be transcribing the text. All right. I'll look into that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. All right. Um, anything else from DNI? Georg, Don. Daniel. I think you're good. Alrighty. Uh, Sean or Jesus? Right now we're working on refining uh, how we define the metrics for the release that we're going to do as part of the Open Source Leadership Summit. Okay. Um, I think that's the main focus right now. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and everyone remember that we are also interested in getting more use cases. So if you have some kind of use case or something, let us know and, and we'll help you to convert that into a into document. Okay. Um on the on the releases, Sean, is that a is that a software release or is that a release of it's a release of metrics. Metrics. The okay. the software part, I mean, Jesus and I will also work with software, so sometimes those are confused. I think I think both Grimoire Lab and Augur are continuously releasing new features. Okay. So is it for some of the metrics we intend to have reference implementations in the way. But the main focus is in trying to have the definition of the of the metrics. Okay. Um, wasn't there one focus area that you're working on in particular? Code. Code development. Code okay. development, yeah. Here. In fact, there is a full request from uh, this morning uh, trying to can with all the goals in the um, in the in the focus area, and it is a proposal of metrics in all the areas. Okay. But, but now we need to go through it and uh, start refining the metrics themselves because uh, some of the metrics very likely are going to change in name, and in some other cases they are going to be more precisely defined. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I want to be on that call so I can keep up with the big metrics list. If the names change or the, the questions change. Yeah. And I have a pull request I'll submit before tomorrow's meeting as well. So, mm -hmm. so it's Actually, a matter of trying to have more generic names. For instance, we have pull requests all over the place, but pull requests are very specific to GitHub. So if you are using Gerrit or you are using GitLab, you use different names. So we need to use more neutral names for the same thing. But it's still it makes sense when you do make a name change that you could just put an issue in the metrics repository that just says, please double check this focus area. It could be as broad as that. Yeah. And just yeah, give so the focus area. So now we're working with the focus area file itself. And mm -hmm. when that's done, yeah, we can do exactly what you're saying. Just a super, a super simple issue that just says, there's been changes in this focus area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Okay. That'd be helpful. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I had something else I was going to say. I don't want to remember. Sean, did you have anything on the risk? Did you want to talk a little bit about that? We had a risk. Um, we had a risk call last week that was lightly attended. Uh, I think we have. Um, uh, new participation now from the Linux Foundation. Uh, I don't know if she's still on. Yeah, Jessica Wilkerson is mm -hmm. um, starting to work with us on the risk area. Um, 
there's some badging that Matt has started, Matt Snell has started to implement inside of um, Augur, as well as looking for the license, you know, we're scanning, we're doing some license file scanning uh, under risk now as well. Um, and uh, Jessica, if you want to, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself or your role or your interest in the risk area to the group. She really introduced herself, but yeah, I was. I can provide a little bit more detail. Recont recontextualizing, I guess. Okay. You know, <laughs> the personal intro is now onto the work interests. <laughs> yes. Um, so the risk metrics are particularly interesting for me um, with a little bit of necessary background. I just came from the United States Congress at the beginning of the year where I had been working on a lot of healthcare cybersecurity policy issues. And one of the things that's coming up a lot in healthcare security, especially around uh, medical devices, is the medical device community is getting ready to deploy software bill of materials across pretty much all of their products. What they don't have is once they have a really good identification of what different software packages they're using, is how to judge the quality, the security, the health of those various components. Um, that obviously creates issues for them and in, in various areas. Uh, for license compliance, for mergers and acquisitions, for just their general ability to state with confidence that they are secure, that they are taking appropriate steps, et cetera. So uh, in talking to Kate, um, it was decided that it would be good if we could get the healthcare community involved in the chaos metrics, especially in the risk group, um, because we think that not only will they bring a lot of value in terms of use cases and things like that, uh, they're going to be very hungry for the, uh, the metrics and the tooling that are likely to come out of this. Cool. So have you talked at all about, it sounded like it was uh, basically how the bill of materials would be produced? No, that one is actually being solved um, elsewhere. The National Telecommunications Infrastructure Association is leading a, a process that's going to spit that out for them. Um, what they need is that secondary step of once they do have their software bill of materials, once they have their materials identified they need to be able to make value judgments uh trustworthy value judgments about those different components um that frankly the entire industry can agree upon if they don't find something like chaos or are not using are not able to leverage chaos effectively they're going to have to design it on their own so the argument that obviously we're going to be making to them is you don't need to do this out of whole cloth come help the chaos group do it and then everyone ends up helping everyone else so would it be for the, would, would the intention be for some of the tooling to help produce this, this bill of materials based on a standard that's created somewhere else? Uh, not necessarily, I, because I think um, there are either other products that are going to uh, produce that. There's Fossology out of um, mm -hmm. the LF. There's another project that somebody in the device community has already made. Mm -hmm. um, what they need to do is take the output of whatever the bill of the materials is. So when it says, you know, you're using OpenSSL, whatever you're using, I can't even think of anything right now, but like once they have that list, they need to be able to then go, okay, how healthy is OpenSSL v whatever? How healthy is component X? How healthy is component Y? Um, they're going to be able to, they're going to need to do that at merger and acquisition time. They're also going to need to do that on the front end when they're starting to develop new products in order to decide what components they're putting into their products at the beginning. So at least as I understand it and have discussed it with Kate, the risk metrics could help them make informed decisions about what components to include on the front end. And then on the back end, when they're looking at either um, acquiring things or they're looking at partnering with people, they can then take a look at somebody else's bill of materials and make informed judgments about how healthy that partners component or products are. Okay. Um, Sean, I don't know if you had any comments on that. No, I, I think that's, okay. that's where we're at. And I think you know, risk is taking a number of forms and one of them is in the safety critical systems space where there are new regulatory requirements as, as Jessica explained. Okay. Um, it sounds like the, a lot, like there will be a, a number of different pieces of information kind of coming together. Um, so it, maybe it might take me a little while to get my head around, like, yeah. just like what Phosology is producing, and then is that a like a tag file that gets sucked up by something, or is the intention like what we've been doing to try to have, say, the no more scanners as part of okay, the I, tool? Or 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I'm, I just put together where maybe um, I was not explaining something very well. <laughs> um, I, I think you're, you're looking very, you're looking farther ahead than I am looking in that so, so that you can have some kind of software tool that takes maybe a software bill of materials as an input and then spits out something, something to do with the metrics. Yes, that would be great. But I think, um, to be blunt, the healthcare community that would be looking to leverage these things probably aren't even mature enough to be able to get there yet. This would, mm -hmm. for them, even be a manual process where they could maybe look at the GitHub repository of the different metrics or something like that, and then manually be I making see. decisions. I see. Where the, the, the goal would be later that, yes, they get to some kind of automated fashion, but even in the meantime, the manual list of metrics, they frankly don't even know what questions they should be asking. Okay. So having a group of experts like yourselves who've already said, ask these things is very valuable. I see. Okay. Um, okay. That, that makes a ton of sense. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, cool. Any other questions on, on risk? That's pretty exciting. Uh, all right. Um, does any uh, does anybody have anything else? Or this was a long one today for our weekly. <laughs> Longer than it usually is. Yes. Longer than it usually is. Just for a lot of good content, though. So this is good stuff. Um, I, you know, I know that um, DNI rotates their people who lead the calls, and um, this is what I was asking Don about earlier. If she's going to lead the calls for common and. That might rotate. Uh, do we ever want to rotate this one? I think by default, I just kind of end up being the first hello. Um, we are more than welcome to rotate it. And should we get more formal on note taking on the weeklies? Any thoughts on this? Don't worry. I don't like if somebody. Uh, wants to leave are it, there? You know, since well, I'm always on the weeklies, I don't even know what the note taking protocol is. Um, our, just taking uh, minutes. Just jotting I mean, down notes. I mean, do we have? But we don't some... have anything at the moment. So I think, I think yeah, some small itemized list of what we discussed would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, for, especially if folks can't make the call, then they at least know the content of what they missed, and that might help them decide if they want to watch the video. Even just high level. Okay. Yeah, I think it could be super high level. Okay. Um, so, um, and then bleeding. Should we rotate that? I don't send out an agenda if you notice on these weeklies, just because it will. We just don't have an agenda. We just kind of meet monthly with the agenda. I would, I would, yeah. I think it's if somebody wants to take on leading, I totally for that. I'm well, happy that somebody else is doing it right now. Yeah, I was gonna say my um, email's in the <laughs> chat. If you want to lead, just send me a note. But I probably um, will rotate minute taking. Yeah. I, I really like the rotating in the DNI work group because it builds up capacity, it spreads the work amongst the members and makes the project more sustainable because we eliminate single points of failure. Am I a single point of failure? <laughs> I mean, we did have some, we did have uh, Jesus and I managed to substitute for you the weeks that you couldn't be here. So yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think, I think, you know, we're not, we're not you, but we have more facial hair. I think. Why don't, okay. So why don't next week, um, I, I can still leave it next week, but Sean, I'm going to put, you, if you would like to be on minutes, I was just going to say, I'm going to put you on minutes. I'll be happy to do like minutes next week. Yeah. <laughs> no, happy to contribute minutes next I week. I would be like to do that. That would be sure. awesome. I would love it. And then from there, we can kind of start at least rotating that component. And then as other people want to lead, we can change that. Then maybe we just do rotation on the leads for the monthly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. the weekly is so anyway. All right, cool. And then um, uh, we've had a kind of just one last thing. We've had an ongoing discussion about um, versioning. Is it, has it, that gone anywhere at this point? Has there been any movement on that? I just had one more note here. We had a follow-up discussion. Was it in last week's meeting that we talked about it? Yeah, yeah. I was. I was last week. I yeah. think we tabled it and said that we should make that decision at the board meeting. Okay. Okay. I've got it in the board agenda. I was wondering. That sounds familiar. Yeah, because there seems to be just a, a bit of a fundamental disagreement between whether the metrics 
uh, on the website should be a constantly updating thing or a periodic release. Okay. And so the board just needs to make that decision. Okay. I will add that. Okay, thank so you. We do have one infrastructure proposal on how to do it. That's the one we had developed with Toby. Mm -hmm. And then if I remember correctly, last week we said it would be good to have another proposal fleshed out so that when we get to the board meeting, we already have different proposals to work with and don't have to start from scratch. And also so that we know the technical implications of each of the two decisions. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can, let me, I'll, I can try to work that out a little bit before next week. And I also think we need to get Kevin's perspective on the other proposal as well, since I don't think he was in the meeting where, where that one was developed. Okay. okay. Yeah, Kevin always teaches at this time, this semester at least. Okay. All right. Um, that was that. All right, cool. Any other big issues from anybody? All right, well, uh, GMD meeting tomorrow at early in the morning, uh, chaos mm -hmm. common meeting on Thursday, and then I'll see you next week. See ya. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Thank everybody. Thanks, bye. Mm -hmm.